Hey there, and welcome to the best farming build guide. Today we're going to take a look at the best farming armor, tools, and attributes. Let's not waste your time with chit chat and uncertainties and jump right into it. First off, we're going to start with the armor. The cheapest and most effective armor for farming is the level 60 epic basic heavy armor set. And as usual, we're going to reduce the load of our inventory by cutting our weight in more than half by applying the armor reduction kit to our armor. The heavy helmet provides plus 2 encumbrance, the heavy pauldron plus 2 encumbrance, the heavy gauntlets plus 2 encumbrance, the heavy tasset plus 2 encumbrance, the heavy sabotons plus 2 encumbrance. This leaves us with a total of plus 10 in encumbrance. Now to the best trick when building a good encumbrance build, the bearer pack, which gives a total of 6 points in encumbrance swapping out the helmet which only has two. And that leaves us with a plus 14 in encumbrance. And in addition, we're gonna buff up using the elixir of numbing which gives another plus three in encumbrance and the elixir of ingestion which gives a plus three in survival. And suddenly we have a whopping plus 17 in encumbrance. And should we wish, we could apply a war paint, giving another plus three in encumbrance. Now, when it comes to attributes, we're gonna get strength up to perk two, agility up to perk one, vitality up to perk two, grit to perk two, encumbrance to perk five, and survival to perk three. I usually like a little extra in stamina, so I'm gonna put the rest in grit. Now, let's take a really quick look at our best healing setup. We want the Abrosia to be our panic heal for close call fights. This heals a lot, and heals even when you are taking damage. And the Roasted Hunch when we get time to heal in between fights. The Concentrated Aloe Extract is for emergency heals in fights when Ambrosia is not enough. And Numbing Wraps is to heal big outside battle when you don't have time to wait for the Roasted Hunch to heal you slowly. Over to the weapons and tools department. We got our trusted venom infused daggers, and as always we apply our master weapons fitting to these to improve armor penetration and damage. But it's the bleed and poison effect we're mainly after when it comes to these babies. In the tools department, do me a favor and never use the hatchet. It has no real use at the moment, so pick or pickaxe is always the better one, depending on what resource you're after. And as always, here as well, we upgrade the tools with our trusted advanced tool upgrade kit. This makes the tool yield extra resource, and for this kit, which is the best in the game, it yields plus 3 when in normal mode and plus 6 when in survival perk 3. Black blood tools and obsidian tools are equally good. They are the best in the game and yields the most per harvest. Black blood tools are much harder to get and therefore we use obsidian tool for our normal harvest build. And obsidian tools don't come in all variants, 
So we use the second best tools in the game, which is star metal tools, where obsidian tools are not available. Difference between black blood slash obsidian versus star metal is minimal. So going full star metal because it is cheaper is never wrong. Like any build, we also pack our torch, gas mask and water skin for this build. The new thing to note this here is that we also pack a few master repair kits so we can repair our tools when we are going out on the big farming runs. And also, remember to bring a few extra potions in case the effect wears off and you need to rebuff. While I demonstrate our weapon setup and farming setup, I want to leave you with some parting words of good advice. Number 1. Black blood tools and obsidian tools are hard to come by. And the difference between those and star metal is small. So consider just going full star metal. Number 2. The main use for black blood tool is to not use a normal advanced upgrade kit on it, but to rather use the oil of bounty. This gives a time limited use where you get about 25 extra resource. This is the ultimate end game farming mode and it's expensive to use. So again, consider going full star metal until you are rich and ready to attempt this black blood tool plus oil of bounty trick. Number 3. You can always use the other elixirs to buff the rest of your stats, but in a farming build like this, it's rarely worth it. The same goes for war paint. As long as you get your stats to the perks shown in this video, you are good to go. Number 4. If you are mining nodes that are close to each other, use the pickaxe and do a small side swipe to hit multiple nodes of resource. This makes the harvesting go much faster than using a pick which only hits the targets that are basically on top of each other. Number 5. The bearer pack can be gotten by putting a bearer or a backpack thrall in the wheel of pain and then taking it from it once you deploy it. You can also craft one on the armor bench using a tier 4 thrall in the workstation. With that said, I hope this video was useful. And if it was, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can check in and see the new guides, tips and tricks as they come out. Have a good one.